A lot of people will give you different reasons for luminary retrogrades, but from our perspective, the luminaries are going backwards, kind of like a rewinding of the settings. I don't know about you, but this has made me pretty tired and whacked out like I'm going backwards. But this might be similar to the archer drawing his bow back before flinging it forward a hundred times further than he pulled it back. I've spent this time making a book with a co-author, David, and in my opinion it's the best book in the world. It finally lays down the facts in concrete, in a physical form, and I can't wait to share all that with you. And this video might suck, but here it is. Thanks for being here, God bless, and welcome. Okay, going for broke. I mean, it's Mercury retrograde right now, and my technology is completely whacked out. I'm trying to process this video here. Nothing's happening. You can see the little wheel up here, and I shouldn't push it. I should probably turn on this little fan. It should help cool it. I usually record for an hour and chop it up, throw out what I think is the junk. And if I'm going to record, I try to do it at night or early in the morning. I can feel the pressure from the dog, cat, the chickens. Chief and I already went on a morning walk, but none of us have eaten. I'm on my second cup of coffee, and last week I ended with this, and today I want to begin with it. This was shared by David, as I mentioned last week, and this is a pretty hardcore find when it comes to questioning things. And if you're new, or just stumbled upon this channel for some reason, we're told there were a thousand gold miners in San Francisco in 1849. The 49ers. Grand gold rushing 49ers. And in essentially less than 25 years, the city looks like this. This is just a glimpse. They've been working on a mile of road. My road, in fact. Just a mile, not even. Maybe half a mile. For two years. Two years. It's so annoying. But in 1849, they began building this city. They had at least five fires and still managed to build this old-looking city, this beautiful city. And back here is the site of the World's Fair. The World's Fair would not occur until 1915. There were others. There was a winter exposition in the late 1800s, and then they had the more known one, or sort of, in 1915. And they demolished everything, except for a few buildings like this one. We are told they demolished this one and rebuilt another one exactly like it. But what we see here is that these buildings already exist in 1878. And I understand for five years we've been exploring this topic, not just this topic, but many similar to it, asking the question, were these cities already here? And exploring it from as many angles as we can. But in this case, I think the evidence speaks for itself. This is probably a couple miles away from where this picture is taken, and yet we can see these babies towering over the skyline. And when coupled with the buildings surrounding it, how old they look, I think it becomes pretty clear. And the more we discover, the less I need to say, I think. What do you think? Chief and I recently went out to the coke ovens again. Somebody has come out here and remove tons and tons and tons of bricks. It used to be kind of ridiculous. I used to stumble around walking over giant piles all throughout the base of these supposed ovens and now somebody has really cleaned everything up. It was safer to walk around but much of the evidence that I was looking for was now gone. If you remember, it looked like someone just took a backhoe bucket to all of these, and there were piles of bricks all over the place. And now it was very hard to find one complete brick. I documented what I could. This one I'd like to look into, Royal, 
and we can see the plate marks. And when you stomp around on these, you feel a hollowness under them, in front of the entrances and inside. And I hope to look into this company, Star, and here's another one. FB, I believe, is Firebrick, or that's what we're told. Here we see Haas, Star, and what I called Yo. And I remember seeing T-Car Bricks out here. And upon researching T-Car Bricks, I discovered that the narrative tells us they were shipping them from England, around the southern point of South America, and back up to California. And maybe that's fine for some bricks, if we're to accept that, but not all the bricks. And what's most baffling to me is how unused these kilns or ovens are. So absolutely clean. Nobody has been cooking anything in these babies. And what seems like type of covering that's been completely cooked out. Or were these bricks up here? We can see that they seem to fit together, but have changed and fused. And I've shown you bits of brick even in this upper crust. I'll just call it a crust for now. Here a royal, a star, and this company Mabco. Less of these, and this company makes large ones too. Really large ones with their stamp, Haas. And I think we're lucky we have caught this research right in time, but it's also disheartening. Some of the ovens have completely been destroyed, like we see here. In fact, the machine that I think was responsible for recycling this place is right here. It looks like an earth mower. And when I went out here, I drove way back into the hills. There's a road back here, and there's a giant step wall or pyramid base. And I drove as far as I could, and then it seemed to turn into private property. And even this might have been private, I'm not sure. And this really got weird, because I let Chief out up here and began finding all sorts of brick and even chains sticking out of the ground that I couldn't pull out. And here we can see that they have covered something up again. I've shown such things down below the kilns, but here they're doing the same thing up here. We can see a fence and pretty much the end of the road for me. But there were Agent Smiths up here. I could see them. And here there are vehicles. Here there was this abandoned power infrastructure. And it looked like there had been a city up here as well. The kilns were just some little feature that had been revealed. This road was actually paved, but in absolute ruins. Like it was paved a hundred years ago. And as I mentioned, I believe that there's more ovens or kilns or whatever they are quite possibly just the tops of buildings and here i'm driving and you can see all these different levels and here you see the ovens but here you see more rows and i think all of this has the same pattern as we see down there this could all be excavated and reveal more and here i continue this is what i think they discovered and maybe just some brick poking out. And then we have another row. And then we come up to the three exposed rows. And this is supposed to be the train depot. The old train depot here. But even this little stupid shack, for example, I took a picture of. As we see here. And you can see two different eras. I mean, whoever built it intended for arch windows and door. And somebody has roughed in these cheap wooden frames to accommodate square windows and doors. Even this roof that intrudes into the arch seems like an afterthought. So was this just the top of a building? Just something poking up similar to all the other ruins we see? Because everything that we do see that's not made of brick is absolute junk out here. Just a junk fest like this. Old West wood and metal junk fest. And record. This is the California Midwinter International Exposition in 1894. Just a mouthful, really. You could name it something that would be easier to remember. The fair they had in 1915 that we're 
more familiar with was the Panama Pacific International Expo. Here we can see the Midwinter Expo. In this tower, really large building here, and back here. Over here as well. And we're told this fair encompassed 200 acres. I don't know how to express the size of 200 acres. It's a lot. 120 structures were constructed. 120 structures in 1894. Here we can see one of the buildings. Really shiny dome. And we can see the people enjoying themselves down here. The horse strolling right through the fair. Shitting on the streets. I'm sure these people are used to stepping on shit. And if they did just construct this, we're told it was only used for less than a year. Only took a year to build. What about the trees? Did they take a year to overgrow some of these structures? Just engulfing this little mini dome right here doesn't seem like a part of the one year plan. And just everything really overgrown. Beautiful pine trees, it looks like. A little smokestack right here. Seems unnecessary. And this is 1894. Here we can see different exhibits. Boone's Wild Animal Show. Here we go. Well, who cares about Boone's Show? This building looks more like an exotic residence. This is all pretty silly. Look at their little cheap wooden podiums. This whole thing is stupid. Daniel Boone's Arena. They've put up here. Look how they spelled Daniel. These people are just creepy. Look at this guy. Step right up. No, thank you. This guy is thinking, these people have enslaved me. I don't want to be here. And this man, just a creepy, creepy mustache fair here. Great. What else? Here's the mining camp. One of the most unique exhibits at the fair was the mining camp that cost around $2,500 to build. Alright, let's look at that. What a dump. But actually looking like a modest encampment. But to say this was built as an exhibit, again with the trees full grown around it. These roads looking pretty compacted. This looks like an old shanty town. And what do we have up here? A little coliseum. A road. And some kind of waterfall. An infrastructure. This is just a peak at 1894 San Francisco. And here they're playing Old West at the fair and charging an admission fee to visit popular exhibits like this, the mining camp. Now here's something, the Eskimo village. And again, are these people here against their will? Just seeming really awkward. What terms would they accept to come to this stupid fair? Look at this tent that's been built into this leaning tree. Here we can get a look at what we're dealing with here in this little town center, essentially. Just over the top, this isn't something you build in a year, even out of cardboard. And was this here? Let me just stop beating around the damn bush. Was all of this shite here? Here we can see them grading the site for the expo. Horses and workmen prepping. So here you go, here's an old horse grader, if you ever wondered what that might look like. So this is pretty worthless. The soil is pretty worthless, sandy. We're told this is them preparing to build all of this. What do you think? And here we can see the fair complete. Fully lit up, 1894. No talk of Tesla giving a damn about this particular fair. Look at this thing, just over the top. And we can see a lot of the buildings. The Heidelberg Castle, a German village. Here the administration building, the mine blower, torn down. Horticulture building, manufacturers and liberal arts building, mechanical arts building, all this for the lesser known six month winter fair. Here the museum. So 1894, now let us go 
to this picture. Let me back up a little. We've all seen this amazing picture in 1878. 1878 San Francisco here. Just pan around. I'm sure most of you have seen this by now. So 1849 to 1878. How many years is that? Doesn't matter. Here it is, a city for a million people in around 25 years. We see these beautiful homes, and then we're gonna zoom in, and what do we see off in the distance? It's the World's Fair. There it is. Natives of San Francisco, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the right direction? There's a glorious city towering on the hilltop in 1878. And here we're told this was all built for the 1894 fair. And is that what we're seeing here? Now let's look at something else. I'm actually having a fire right now. I'm considering the oldest architecture in America. And I was just watching a wise Navajo elder his YouTube channel, and I love his channel. I love to listen to the old language, and I would love to learn it. I remark how similar it sounds to Hebrew. And in the old language, the Navajo refer to themselves as the Ne, and the Ne speak of the Anasazi, and that the Anasazi were only around for a couple hundred years. And at first they accepted the Anasazi, and pretty soon they grew what we would call to be evil and doing horrific things, science, cloning, flying around and warring. And from what I understand, he says the ruins at Chaco Canyon are ruins of the Anasazi. And they eventually were taken out, partially creating their own demise and eventually destroyed by a greater force. And this morning I consider if it wasn't this same architecture that we see all over the world, the kind we look at on this channel, and if we look at the Navajo story through this lens, and the Navajo and the Hopi are in a little corner of Arizona, and what if these Anasazi that reaped havoc throughout the land for 200 years may have been the builders of all the wonders we see throughout the realm. The Navajo would be unaware of all the wonders. I've spent a lot of time in that corner of Arizona, like Chaco Canyon. And they speak of these ruins as once glorious and advanced, modern. And now we see what looks completely cooked out, just the bones, even the bones distorted. And what if this time was much more advanced? As I joke, what if the men in tights really were advanced? Their ways, so beyond what we could imagine, their heads could be carved on mountains. Without the use of dynamite and crude methods were given, maybe they could build in the ancient way, using sounds, using words. This is a power that the Navajo speak of in the old times. People knew the language that would allow them to utter impossible feats into existence. With a sound, with a word, they could bring down a mountain, or make one. And the language was taken away from them. Similar to the story of Babylon. People were scattered, and the language was lost. New, dumbed-down versions would replace the old language. And yet some of it remains with all people, but is quickly disappearing. And that was our exploration of history. I hope you enjoyed. I love you all. God bless. And I'll see you next week.